to module three. In this module, I'm going to show you how to turn your modules that you've already planned and created from your in-person content into a digital module format. Your students will eventually be able to access these digital modules by using an interactive PDF that will serve as the main page of your course. Now in a minute, we're gonna jump on my computer so that I can model everything you need to know to turn your modules digital. But before we get started, I just wanna mention that I'm going to be using Google Slides to model this because that's what I personally have access to. But you can do everything that I'm going to show you how to do in PowerPoint as well. Okay, let's head over to my computer and get started. Okay, so to get started creating our module pages and converting them into a digital format, I'm going to open up a new Google Slides document. And again, if you're a 360 user, you can go ahead and use PowerPoint and do all the same things that I'm gonna show you here today. So I'm gonna open up a blank document and I like to go ahead and just get rid of all of the formatting and themes because I like to start with just like a clean blank slate. I am gonna go to file and then page setup. I like to work with a standard view and that's because often I will add different pictures and things like that to the background when it's in a normal paper size like 11 by eight and a half it's easier to add a picture to the background without it getting distorted and stretched out now to build this model of our PDF course together I'm going to use one of my previously created workshops I'm using interactive learning pathways with your students and so I'm going to use the content from that workshop to model what we're doing here so I'm going to just title this interactive pathways course and so now I'm gonna refer to my module planner and I actually have three modules and I embedded the introduction and the closing right within the first in the last module I also have my resources embedded into each of the modules as well so I'm not going to actually create a separate resources section so to get started building your digital modules you will need to create a slide for each individual module module. They will all live on their own page. But I'm going to start with one and create my module one because I can save myself some time by just copying and pasting that slide to preserve the formatting so that I only need to tweak each slide rather than building it from scratch again. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build my module one by adding a text box. And I'm just gonna change the lettering. I do like to go with the Century Gothic. I feel like it's a little cleaner. And so I'm gonna make this title a little bit bigger because it's the heading. Once I have my heading, the next thing I need to do is to create a button for each of the activities or resources that are going to be embedded into this module. Now again, referring to my module planner, I have one video that goes in this module and a practice example of a pathway that the learner is going to engage in to get a better understanding. So I will need a button for each of those. And lastly, I need to create a button that will take the learner back to the main page. Now we haven't created the main page yet, but I'm gonna set myself up for that step as I'm creating my module pages. So to create a button, I'm gonna go to the shapes and you can choose any shape you want. I kind of like the rectangle that's a little bit rounded on the, on the edges. And then within this button, I can put some text. So I'm gonna go up to my little alignment and I'm gonna choose in the middle, both horizontally and vertically. We're going to build our module by building our content in a step-by-step -step format. So whatever I want the learner to do first, I'm going to put in the top button and then whatever comes second will be underneath that and then so on. So the first thing I want them to do is watch the instructional video. Now I'm just gonna format that a little bit. Of course, I can change my font to be any of the fonts that I have. And I can also change the color of my button by going to the little paint bucket and choosing any of the colors here, or I can choose a custom color. If you have the hex code, you can put it up in here. You can choose any color really that you want. So I'm going to give this a little color and just choose a yellow. And then the border, I can also change. You can see it's kind of thin right here. So if I click on the button again, I can come up to these lines, which is the border weight, and I can make 
make it a little thicker and you can see it's a little thicker now. And if I click again, I can even change the color of that border. Right now it's like this dark gray. So I'm just gonna change it to black, but you could change it to any of the colors that you want. Now I have my first button and it's the first thing that I want them to do. When I highlight my button, I can hit Command C. I have a Mac, so if you're using a PC, it would be Control C. And then if I click underneath it and hit Command or Control V, it will paste the button exactly as I've created it. And so now I can put my second button right underneath. The reason I just copy and paste is because now I have a button that's already exactly the same size and already formatted for me so that I'm not creating all my buttons from scratch. Now, the second thing that I want them to do is the pathway example. And so I'm gonna type that there. And then those are the only two activities that they need to do in module number one. And so the last thing I need to include is again, to build in that button that will take them back and connect them to the main page so that when they're done with the content of this module, they can get back to the main page. I'm just gonna paste one more and I'm gonna offset this one so it's on the bottom. That way you can kind of tell that it's not one of their activities. And I'm going to just change the text to say back to main page. Now I do like this one to look a little bit different so that it helps the participant understand that this button does a different job. I'm going to take the fill color and I'm just gonna change it to this reddish color. And that way it kind of shows them that it will take them back to the main page. So at this point, I have the formatting for this modules page just about done. The only thing I'm going to do is just add directions. So I'm gonna actually just move these buttons down a little bit. I'm actually just gonna hold and drag right over them so that they stick together. Then I can move them together and not worry about the spacing. I can add a new text box to complete the module. Click each button working from top to bottom. Once you have complete the activities, click the red button to go back to the course main page. So now we have the title of the module, the directions for the student or learner, and we have a button for each of the activities that they will need to do, as well as a button that goes back to the main page. Now eventually we're gonna come through and we have to actually link the resources to these buttons. But before we do that, I find it easier to do things one step at a time so that while my mind is already focused on one task, I can get all of that done before moving to the next. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna link the resources to the buttons last. So I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side where my slides are, and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this slide right underneath itself. There are two ways you can do this. So you need to make sure that the slide you wanna copy is highlighted, and then you can come up to edit and you can hit copy, click under the slide, go back to edit, and you can paste that. Or you can just use your shortcuts, which is what I like to do, and hit either Control if you're PC or Command C if you're a Mac, and then hit the Control V button or or command V. So now you have two identical slides. Now, instead of having to reformat everything, I can just take module one and change it to module two. The directions are completely the same. I also start module two with an instructional video so that I can leave this exactly how it is. For the activity for module two, they're going to do a reflection activity in Padlet. They're going to answer some reflective questions and share their ideas out. And then we already have our back to main page button. So with this module, all I had to do was just change the button for the activity that they were going to do. So now I can come back over to my slides on the side and I'm going to copy and paste module two and I can change that to module three. Again, it starts with an instructional video. In this module, they are going to receive a pathway planner that they can use to begin planning and creating their own pathways. And that is going to be their brain check. And then again, here is the button to go back to the main page. So now I have module one, two, and three all formatted. All I need to do now is to link all the resources to the buttons. So I'm gonna come back to module one. Now, of course, I've already recorded my instructional video and I will be able to access that in YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and I keep my videos here. So I'm going to give them the video that goes with module one and get the shared link. And then I'm gonna come back to my interactive pathways course. So now I have the link for the instructional video. When I click on my button or the shape that I've created for my button and it's highlighted, I can come up to the little link 
I can copy and paste the link to the video, hit apply, and now you can see that it's linked to this button so that when the learner comes here, they can get to it right there. So now I have my instructional video all embedded. Now I need to go ahead and link my pathway example button to the example. This is in my Google Drive. Okay, so now this brings me to a point that is pretty important, and that is when you are creating a link to a resource, specifically ones that may be created in Google, there are times where you're going to want the learner to have their own copy of something. And this is an example of that. So this is a pathway that a student would work through learning about change and adaption. They're gonna have different activities where they have to do a Venn diagram and do some typing and a sort and complete different activities that I want to be able to collect their individual work rather than them manipulating all the same thing. That would be like giving them all the same piece of paper. And we definitely don't wanna do that. So I need to consider a couple of things. First, First, do I want the students to be able to work from the same resource or do they each need their own copy? And this would be a case where, yes, they each need their own copy. Also, if it's a resource created in Google, I need to make sure that it is shared so that anybody with the link would be able to use this and access this. Otherwise, it's going to force the learner to have to request access. So right now it is set to where it needs to be, but when you're first creating a new resource, when you get to the share, it's going to look like this, where it says restricted. So to fix that, you just click on it, the little down arrow, and you change it to anyone with the link, done. And now anyone that you provide the link to can get the resource. Now that we've made sure that our permissions are updated, I just wanna show you how to make sure each of your learners gets their own copy of a resource. You want to go up to the URL and highlight all the way into where you see the word edit after that backslash. So you can see right here, it says edit. You're going to get rid of everything through that word edit and up to the backslash. And then you're going to write the word copy. This is the link that you're going to copy and paste to the button. The copy at the end makes it so every learner will have to get their own copy of this activity. So when I come back over here, I just click on my button and I'm gonna go up to my link I'm gonna paste it into the box and hit apply. And so now I will show you what that looks like. I'm gonna to go to the slideshow mode. And when I click on that pathway button, you can see that this pops up where it asks me to make a copy. Click make a copy and get my own pathway. You can see up here that it's the copy of the activity because it says copy. And this way all of my workshop participants can actually engage in the activity like they're a student to really get a good idea of what the pathway is like so that as they learn to create their own pathways, they have that lens to work through. Now, we don't actually have the main page created yet to hook up to this button, and that's fine. We will do that in the next module when we create our main page. So module one is all done except for the main page button, and so now we can go on to module two. So I'll click on module two, and I need to link my instructional video. So I'm gonna go back to YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna get the shareable link and copy that. I'm gonna come back over here, click the button, go to my link and now the instructional video is all linked to my button. And now the reflect and share activity I created in Padlet. Here it is right here. There are three questions that the learner can read and then share their own response, which will contribute to this ongoing conversation that has been started by all the students who have taken my course so far. Students can kind of be learning from each other and sort of creating like this digital learning community around this content. There's a little share button here. I'm gonna go copy the link to my clipboard and I'm gonna come back to my pathways course and link it to the button by clicking the button and then my little link and then I'm gonna copy and paste it and hit apply. And now my Padlet is all hooked up. So I have my two activities all set for module two and I don't have my main page yet so I'm gonna move on to module three and come back and do the main page button after I create the main page. So for module three, I'm gonna go grab that instructional video and I'm gonna click the button, paste it, and now we have the third instructional video for module three all embedded to the button. And now I'm gonna go and grab the pathway planner that I have created for my students to use in order to create their own pathways and support them in their new learning. And I'm gonna come back to my module page 
and there's my planner. If I check it by going to the preview, if I click on here, it should force me to make a copy, and yes, it does. So now, all of our digital modules are created. We will just have to go back and connect the buttons back to main page to our main page after we've created it in our next module. You can always change the look of your module pages by using different fonts, as well as changing the different shapes and colors and borders of your buttons, and you can even change the background of your modules. So maybe you want module one, two, and three to be different colors. So if you wanted to do that, you could go up to the background and choose from the colors here. You can do all kinds of different colors however you want them to look, mix and match with your button colors and all of that good stuff. You can also create a little border around the outside of your module if you wanted to get a little fancier. And to do that, I go back to the shapes right where we created the same shapes that we used to make our buttons. And this time I'll choose the rectangle shape. And when I start in the corner and just drag it and move it over, it makes a shape. And now I can do a couple of things. I can leave it this color and I can make the border a little thicker and maybe change the border color and then I can come up to arrange order send it to the back and now it creates sort of like a mat in a picture frame where it's just this additional layer of color on top of the other color the other thing you can do is get rid of the color behind it and just create a thick border if I highlight the shape go back to my little paint bucket I can choose transparent and now it's just back to the slide color with a little border around it and I can even choose you know to make the border extra thick if I wanted to do that so there are just different things that you can do as a little quick spiff to make your module a little bit more visually appealing and create your own little artistic style when you're creating your courses that's it for getting your modules into a digital space that your learner will be able to access through an interactive PDF let's just do a quick recap of what we learned in this module first each module needs to be created on its own slide or page. Build your content in the order that you want your students to follow from top to bottom or left to right. Check the share settings for all of your digital content to make sure the student is able to access it. Provide written directions on the top of the page as a reminder for the student. You can do a quick spiff for each module by changing background or font color or adding text frames or borders. Now at this point you can take the modules that you've planned out for module 2 and convert them into the digital module for Format. To help you with this process, I've included an easy checklist resource in this module that highlights all the steps that we covered to help you create your module pages. When you're done creating your module pages, you can move on to module four, where we will pull everything together by creating the interactive PDF that will become your digital course's main page. I will see you next in module four.